like to call the Jackson County Board of Commissioners annual uh, meeting for September 17th to order, please. At this time, I'd like all to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation led by Commissioner Corey Kennedy. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Yes, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Bear? Commissioner Walls? Present. Commissioner Kennedy? Present. Commissioner Duckham? Present. Commissioner Tompkins? Here. Commissioner Mahoney? Present. Commissioner Williams? Present. Commissioner Elwell? Here. Chairman Shotwell? Here. All present. Thank you. Item two, a, approval of the agenda. We have a motion in support. Any additions? Deletions, corrections. Seeing or hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, duly carried. We have no awards or recognitions to come before the board. Communications and petitions. Any communications and petitions? Seeing or hearing none, we have a special order, a public hearing from the Enterprise Group on the Brownfield Plan for the American One uh, Center uh, Co-op uh, Center on. King Road and M60. Amy Guerrero. Thank you very much. Amy Guerrero on behalf of the Enterprise Group and the Jackson County Brownfield Redevelopment Authority. You have before you tonight a resolution to approve a brownfield plan for the American One Credit Union development that's in Spring Arbor Township. If you've been by, you've seen the construction. It looks great. The brownfield plan provides a means of financing to reimburse the Brownfield Authority and the developer for their eligible environmental costs as a result of that project. Um, if you're familiar with the property and you've read the uh, Brownfield plan, uh, there was former construction buildings there, um, service station, gas station, so there were definitely some Brownfield cleanup issues that um, the Brownfield plan is financing. This project had an investment in excess of $1.6 million. It anticipates creating 12 full-time equivalent jobs. The total reimburse reimbursement to American One Credit Union for the eligible environmental costs is in excess of $95,000. And um, the total reimbursement to the Brownfield Authority is about $12,300. The brownfield plan is estimated at 10 years and capture is anticipated to begin in 2020. We respectfully request that you approve the resolution to approve the brownfield plan tonight. We don't take action at this time, gentlemen. We're in the middle of a public hearing at the moment, but I do <laughs> thank you for your support. Any you, Mr. commissioner Chair. comments? Any questions? Mr. Kennedy. Hi, Amy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just had a quick question. I just wanted to, a little clarity. Okay. Are you fairly confident that had they not had access to the Brownfield plan, that American One would not have gone to that location by themselves? I do not know that. I have not asked that question. But um, gauging on the level of environmental costs, I would say that's a likely possibility. They may have chosen a greenfield. I don't know. But this does give them a tool to get reimbursed for those costs. Okay. It's hard and for me to answer that question. <laughs> and the funds that they'd be receiving will only be going towards the, the cost? Only environmental costs that are eligible for the plan. Thank you. I That's just want exactly to clarify. Yeah, correct. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Yep. Any other commissioner comments? I would remind commissioners that Amy provided for us a spreadsheet on the allocated cost from a project that had gone on earlier this year 
on East Michigan Avenue and uh, to show where all of the different funds go, what funds are not touched, and, and, and to answer the question. So the really the primary organizations that are giving up the money for the Brownfield plan is the county, township, and uh, I don't believe really any other entity because the schools are not touched, and I don't believe... But I believe that the special assessments that the county has against the increased value are. So it's the incremental costs in a brownfield plan that are used to repay the developer. So all entities that are receiving tax benefits from those properties now continue to receive what they're getting now um, to the tune of 50735 um, and 59000 from school debt not captured. Um, there are costs that are eligible. They're called um, department-specific activities that are approved by EGLE, which was formerly Department of Env Environmental Quality, um, that uses school taxes to pay for environmental site assessments, um, asbestos surveys, and things like that. So those costs are eligible with school taxes and they're limited in this plan to 32,000. They will be captured in the first two years of the plan. After that, school taxes will not be used and those are state school taxes. Um, just a point of clarification, all the money that's collected for school, uh, for school fund is throughout the entire state. So if a company's paying $100 in taxes to go to the school fund. That fund funds the per pupil charge for the school districts throughout the state. So wherever there are brownfield plans, that money is delayed until those school, school funds pay those costs. So after two years of collection of those state SET school taxes, then the school fund will get that money again. So that school fund for the whole state funds the per pupil charges across the state. I hope that clarifies it instead of confuses the issue. Any other commissioner comments? Corey? So for clarity, so in this case, it wouldn't take directly from Western School District per se. It's taking mm -hmm. from... You're, exact, the, the you're exactly correct. Western School District will receive whatever school aid funding they qualify for based on their number of pupils as they always would. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you have comments, Commissioner Bear? Thank you. And Mr. Chair, I think um, you do have a speaker for the public. I was, I was going to Thank go you. to okay. the public Thank next. You. There's anyone from the public that would like to speak under the public hearing? Good evening. I'm Amanda Wiles with American One Credit Union, and I want to thank the Commission for the opportunity to present our brownfield plan for approval. We are very excited to be branching into the Western District of Jackson County. As you know, we've been proud to be Jackson since 1950, and we are so excited to be able to serve our Western members and new members that we hope to gain um, in Spring Arbor. We would like to also thank the Township of Spring Arbor, Supervisor Hairline, the Township Board for their support in our uh, new construction endeavor. I'd like to thank Amy Guerrero and the Enterprise Group. They've been absolutely amazing in walking us through this and the education process and EnviroLogic has been above and beyond in providing all of our environmental cleanup. So I would just like to thank you on behalf of Martha First and and American One. Thank you. Any other public comment? This is pertaining just to the public hearing, sir. Okay. If you'd like, there will be another chance for regular public comment. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. Any others to the public hearing from the Enterprise Group? Entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So Have a motion and support to close the public hearing. Any comments? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? At this time, I would like to entertain a motion to approve the Brownfield Plan for the American One Spring Arbor Complex. Have a motion and support. Any comments? Madam Clerk, could you post the vote? For explanation for the audience, the clerk at this time is electronically placing before each commissioner 
the vote whether to vote yes, no, or abstain. And then we will show on the screen how everyone votes. Are you a yay or a nay, sir, or an abstention? He's a yay. This is passed unanimously. We have now arrived at the opportunity for general public comment. Public comment guidelines, each individual must state their name and have three minutes to address the board. You may only address the board once under this public comment. An opportunity may not yield your time to others. Board members will not debate nor answer questions at this time. This is the first public comment. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to speak before you. My name is Donald Eason. I'm the uh, minister at the Higby Street Church of Christ here in Jackson. And I simply am here because I understand there's an individual that attends these meetings that speaks out against Christianity and doesn't want Christians to have the liberty that we are afforded under our Constitution. And certainly it's because of our religious liberties that he even has the opportunity to talk about how much he hates us. And since I love God, I love him, even though I've never met him, uh, it, he, he should understand by him trying to stop us from speaking would also stop him from speaking. Because it's our First Amendment rights that gives us the opportunity to express who we are as Christians, to express our love for one another, express our love for our country, family, and so have it. And so I, I would just like to say I will try to attend these meetings more often so I can run into this individual and he understands he's been doing this for years, uh, <coughs> speaking out against those that love Christ and our Lord Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, and love our God and love our country. And I will certainly. Uh, say this that you just continue to allow the freedoms that we have in in our uh, county in our state in our country to to continue to go forth it is because of our founding fathers they fought against the tyranny of of britain so we could be here and be free the way we are today and so i don't know who it is but i promise you this i will attend as often as possible to to rebuke whatever is said not because i hate him but because I love him and I love the freedom that is allotted to us as individuals and as Christians. I know I get three minutes, but that's all the time I need on this afternoon. Thank you for allowing me this time this evening. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Kelly Underwood and I'm a Summit Town Township resident and I'm here to speak to you tonight about the Car Seat Safety Program. This program is the only reliable, affordable resource in Jackson County which provides low-cost car seats and car seat safety, safety education to families. For over 25 years, this program has impacted numerous families and children from various economic backgrounds, serving mostly low-income families at the health department. What parents and caregivers say about the Car Seat Safety Program what a great program it is and how thankful they are that the program is available to them, that they have learned so much during their car seat safety education session, their one-on-one -on -one education session that they get with a certified technician. They feel so much better that they know how to properly install their car seat and buckle their children in the car seat correctly, and also that they um, don't know what they would do without this program. A sample of the clientele that the car seat safety program serves are low-income families, teen parents who um, can't, simply can't afford car seats on their own, homeless, or, I'm sorry, excuse me, parents um, who are homeless, maybe living at the interface shelter or the aware shelter with their families, parents and families who have lost jobs or single um, parent household incomes who are facing a crisis or just trying to survive to make ends meet, um, now many grandparents are raising their grandchildren and face um, economic hard times. Foster parents use our program or use the program as well um, who are in need of a car seat when they get a placement of a foster child and they need a car seat ASAP. Many caseworkers from local agencies use the program who work with um, families who are in need of safe car seats. 
We work um, with first-time expected parents as well, or current parents who absolutely have no idea how to install their car seat correctly and come to the car seat safety program for the education session and for the expertise that the program provides. And lastly, many agencies in Jackson County who transport children consult the car seat safety program on how, on how to properly install their car seats in their agency vehicles so they can transfer, transport children correctly. And according to NHTSA, the National Highway Safety Administration, motor vehicle crashes are the leading killer of children ages 0 to 13, and 80% of parents do not install their car seat correctly. So with many Jackson County families living in poverty, these families simply just cannot afford and do not have the means to go to a retail store to purchase a car seat, which can cost up to 100 to 150 plus dollars, depending on what type of seat they need. And they also do not have reliable transportation in order to um, go to other counties or outside, um, yeah, outside counties to seek alternative car seat resources. Ten seconds. So what are the families and caregivers of Jackson County to do if this vital resource of the car seat safety program is eliminated? Thank you. My name is Beverly McGill, and you have received letters from me and from Highfields about the car seat safety program. Um, and um, I just wanted to speak a little bit about that. Before I retired in the spring, I was the fund development director for Highfields, and one of my jobs was to respond to counselors who work with a lot of the families in Jackson who are in crisis. Um, and I recall a day that I got a call and the counselor said to me, I don't know what we're going to do. I have a family that's working very hard to keep their family together. She's pregnant. She's due. She has no car seat in which to bring the baby home from the hospital. What, what can we do? We don't have any funds for that. So that's one of the ways that I got familiar with the car seat safety program is they were able to provide this mother an infant car seat in which to safely bring her child home from the hospital. That's not the only case. When I stopped by the office today, I talked with a couple of the counselors there. One's a wraparound coordinator. And I asked her, I said, you know, what are you going to do if this program ends? And even if there's a period of time, I understand that people are working to try to continue this program, but my also my concern is some stopgap funding so there's no lull in the program um, because I think these counselors are not sure what they'll do in order to help the families, and the families aren't sure what they'll do if they don't have the car seats available. So um, I just wanted to say, you know, 274 car seats were provided last year in 2018. For, for a relatively small program that's not terribly expensive, I would really hope that the county might come up with funds to provide for stopgap funding so there's no lull or, or c cessation of the program. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Julie Casuccio. Um, I live in Summit Township. Um, I'm here to talk to you about the CARSI program. Um, this week is National Car Seat Safety Week. I urge you to find money to keep this program going. I would hate to be the county that during this week closed this program. Thank you for your time. Peter Bormuth, 142 West Pearl. I apologize for being late. The city council meeting is at the same time, almost the half hour difference. I wanted to address the um, new business, the treasurer putting uh, the old Missioner Plating Building 520 North Mechanic on the national priorities list. This is obviously something that needs to be done. That's the only place there'll be money to clean up this problem. But I want to talk to you about what might happen in the future. You know, it's very likely, even, that we might have another Mishner plating. There are a lot of industries using toxic chemicals in Jackson. Uh, there are other plating uh, 
you know, plants. So Elm plating is still operating. Matthews plating is operating. If one of those businesses goes out of business, declares bankruptcy, are there going to be vats of chemicals sitting there too? Probably. So I think it's incumbent on this commission to not just say, well, we're going to put this one site on the national priorities list so that we can get it cleaned up, but to do something so that we do not have more of these sites, so that we don't use more taxpayer money, which is essentially what will be done. Our taxpayers are going to pay for this cleanup, and the private enterprise that went bankrupt took all the profit from that. That's not right or fair. It happens all the time, and it's almost standard business. So I'd like you to do something about that and protect our community from this type of problem and this type of expense of tax dollars in the future. Thank you. Good evening. Charlie Hatchard, resident of Blackman Township. I'm here to also talk about the car seat safety program this evening. Uh, I'd like to consider myself an intelligent person. I'm an engineer by trade. I think there's very little that I can't take apart or put back together with my bare hands. And I was amazed to find out that the car seats for infants and children apparently are the one thing that I can't figure out on my own. Uh, the infinite number of combinations of hookups in cars Infant seats, convertible seats, booster seats. You know, every two years you need to get a different seat for your kid as they grow out of one of them and into another one. Uh, we ended up getting a different car when we had our second child. So the, the number of times that we had to utilize the car seat safety program to make sure that the seat we were putting it in, the configuration we were putting it in, the seat that we were buying, that everything fit and worked and wasn't loose or didn't work with a, a seat belt that was a different configuration in there, it's, it's amazing to think of the number of times that someone would have to use a program like this. Um, that's why my wife and I were so shocked to find out that uh, there was a chance that this program was going to be unfunded, was going to be going away. Um, it uh, obviously makes us very sad that Jackson County would not have something like this, uh, knowing that there's a possibility that Lansing or Ann Arbor might have something. Um, you know, some people may have the ability to drive out of county, out of the area, to, to get to something like that. Uh, I would be very concerned for people of low income or people who would not have again, reliable transportation to be able to get out of county to visit something like that. So I would uh, sincerely hope that consideration is given to funding this program and making sure that we're ensuring that the most vulnerable in our community here, uh, the people right at the start of their lives, are, are given the best possible chance for survival and, and uh, taken care of, definitely. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Chris Dalen. I'm from the Napoleon Township, and <clears throat> definitely wasn't planning on coming up here and talk today. You know, my son was interested, interested in coming, so I brought him. <clears throat> but I heard them talking about the the car seat issue, and that kind of hit close to home because we were a recipient of two of these car seats, <clears throat> and it hit pretty close to home because. After our first kid was born, my wife was pregnant with our second, and after a countless number of days of sitting on the floor with her while she was crying, because we had to decide whether to, you know, get diapers for our kids or put food on the table, let alone get a car, second car seat for our son that was due in, a, in a, another month, that program saved, saved our butts, literally. And we thank God every day that it was there because it saved us. So, thank you. Any other public comment? Any other public comment? Public comment is now closed. We have no standing committees, uh, no special meetings of standing committees. At this time, I'd like to approve the minutes of the August 27th, 2019 meeting. 
We have a motion in support. Any questions, corrections, deletions? Seeing nor hearing none, all in favor please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Duly carried. We've arrived at the consent agenda. We have a motion in support for the consent agenda. Any items for removal for discussion later? Madam Clerk, could you please post the vote? Yes, Mr. Chair. Is it yes? Thank you. The consent agenda is passed unanimously. <clears throat> Item 13, Standing Committee Public Safety, chaired by Vice Chairman David Elwell, Commissioner Elwell. Nothing to report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Standing Committee Human Services, chaired by Commissioner Dr. Tompkins. We have nothing to report. Thank you. Standing Committee General Government, chaired by Phil Duckham. Commissioner Duckham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have nothing to report on this evening. Thank you. Item 16, Unfinished Business Administrator Controllers, Pace YMCA Store Camp, Administrator Controller Overton. Thank you. Uh, I'll remind everyone, this is the program whereby, um, I want to say nonprofits, but uh, can um, apply for funding where uh, lenders may not be inclined to, to normally provide funding if not for the actions of this uh, special assessment agreement uh, tonight that before you. Uh, we have their attorney here if anyone has any additional questions about it. Otherwise, it's the document that we reviewed in August. So, questions from the board? Commissioner Bear. Please turn on your mic and speak into it. <coughs> What's the attorney's name? Get to the correct document here. Um, I think I've got it now. Um, page 20. Would you like to join us at the microphone, please, sir? Thank you. All right, page uh, 20. In witness thereof, local jurisdictions, and we have Oakland County, County of Oakland. And deepest of apologies for that. I, I can say the final version of the document has a few small changes to it. Uh, there were, in fact, three Oaklands throughout that document in front of you. Uh, additionally, in conversing with the lender today, much to the pleasure of the property owner, the total amount to be financed has been reduced by about $400 due to a change in interest rates and capitalized interest. So. Um, they are very happy to, to have this project moving forward and excited to move on. I will continue to scrub the document between now and, and when the parties choose to close. And if there are any more typos or errors, we will make changes to that uh, and bring it to the attention of, of you as well as the other parties. Thank you for that. So there. you're saying before this is executed, you will make those corrections? It, it has, that one has been made as well as the other Oaklands. Uh, and a couple of typos, but if there are any other ones that are found, we will make those changes. On page 21, it says a certain day of August 2019. We're already into September. Yes, sir. You'll correct uh, that one, too? Dates have been changed as well. Pardon me? Uh, dates have been changed as well. Uh, the, he has the, final, the final version will have September and the, the appropriate date of close, uh, which... Thank you. Thank you. Any other... Questions? I'm looking for a motion for approval. 
We have a motion in support. Motion carried 9 0. New business. Uh, Treasurer 520 North Mechanic Street National Priorities List. Administrator Controller Overton, can you speak to this? I, I know I know Karen's here. Okay. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, I have presented the resolution to proceed with listing this property on the national priorities list that was presented at standing committee um, there were no questions at that time if there are questions now I can do my best to answer those if they're what the process will be it's going to be the next best step for this property um, and I'm all about getting this contaminated property cleaned up Commissioner Ewell? just a comment uh, Darius and I were talking about this earlier, and I drive by that building fairly frequently, and I'm glad uh, the treasurer is taking the initiative to bring this forward, and I hope it helps us take care of that before something disastrous happens. So, and I'll so move the resolution. We have a motion in support. I want to make the board aware that the Brownfield Authority has reviewed and endorses this action. Great. So we have a motion and support for resolution 0919.46 to, to support and request the addition of certain land within the county of Jackson to the national priorities list for possible environmental cleanup of contamination of hazardous materials. Madam Clerk, would you post the vote? Thank you. Pass 9 0. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Certainly. Can buildings that are currently occupied and under use, the businesses operating, is there a mechanism to add those to this list? Or does it have to be unoccupied and the business closed before this can be done? I am not sure if I know the answer to that question. Tony, if. Tony, I think what you need to do is form the question and let the administrator controller get an answer and give it to all of us because that's something that has to be looked at at length. Yeah, okay? we really expect an answer immediately. Okay, thank you. Yes. All set? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Item 17B, finance, the 27, 2020 budget adoption. Administrator Controller Overton. Thank you. Uh, as uh, you all know, we've spent a great deal of time uh, putting together the budget. I would add for everyone's benefit, uh, for those in the audience in particular, that we did uh, have to reduce our budget substantially this year. Um, uh, it's never an easy task. Uh, we do not, uh, we, we the administration, we the, the County commissioners do not uh, substitute, uh, generally speaking, as a rule, our judgment for that of departments, the people who are where the rubber meets the road are doing the job day in, day out. We rely on their expertise, and we ask them uh, to make the cuts that they believe will cause the least amount of harm and impact to the people they serve. Um, the budget before, you have, we, before us today is that budget. Uh, there was, I know, lots of meetings across both, um, well, all the departments, a number of which have made substantial cuts, the Sheriff's Department in, included. And uh, we have a number of resolutions before the board tonight. Uh, if there's not any questions, we take it from there. I'd move for adoption of the budget. We have a motion and support. Any further questions? Yeah, I'm going to start with Commissioner Bear, and then I'll move to you. Just so that I understand what we're the the idea here. Now, when approving this document, we're approving all the resolutions that, that are here to it. Is that correct? 
Yes, that would be the intent. You'll need to improve all these resolutions. Under the same motion? No, you, you, well, you can. They're, they're all listed. Yes. Okay. What I'll be doing, what I will be doing is reading off the motion resolutions um, so everyone knows where we're at. Okay. Thank you. Nothing further. That's the way I'm going to put it. The way it's been requested by Commissioner Williams. No, no, no. At, at the comfort level of you, that's what we're going to do, yes. Thank you. Tony, you had a question. Is your mic on? Oh, I'm Tony. We are currently working on a solution. Uh, I feel that the, the direction we're working is, while correct, will take time. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. Uh, so the answer would be, have I found an alternative location that can help us? Yes. Do we have a contract to put before you this evening to provide that service and an effective date of that? No, I do not. I appreciate your personal efforts. Thank you. Commissioner Mahoney. Um. I'm on the same track. I'm curious. Um, someone in the in the crowd mentioned something along the lines of uh, of us being able to issue some gap funding to be able to float the program until we do have a contract. Is that something that we can consider tonight, or something that the administrator has looked into? That would be your preference as a commissioner. Are you going to get into the micromanagement of the budget? then please also weigh where you're going to cut something to pay for this. Well, I think that the administrator would be more familiar of, of where he could cut from or where money could be pulled from uh, to float the program, especially if you're saying that it's close. Uh, no, I'm not interested in micromanaging the budget. What I'm interested in is finding a resolution for us not stopping this program. Well, that would take you with a motion and support and a, and a vote to the positive to direct the Administrator Controller's Office to find that money. And then he would have to go back and remove it from somewhere else in the budget and bring it back to us. That's how close the budget is. I shall move. We currently have a motion on the floor. We have to get through David's motion. Then I'll allow you to make your motion. Okay, because we were in discussion. Vice Chairman Elwell, would you rescind your motion? Certainly. Supporting. Commissioner Duckham, are you comfortable with rescinding your motion also? Yes, sir. Thank you. Commissioner Mahoney, please state your motion. We'd just like to make a motion that the administrator um, find some funding to be able to float this program, this car seat program, until we can find an adequate party uh, to, to take the program over. Support. I have a motion and support. Any comments? Commissioner Walls. As I understand it, this is a part of the health department and their budget. That's correct. Their budget uh, seemed to be a little bit skewed. Wouldn't it be uh, appropriate to ask the director of the health department? Because uh, they're funding over there and their budget and they're responsible of it. Find the uh, necessary funding to I float it. I believe the pathway through the administrator's controllers is the best of least resistance for us. As commissioners, and Commissioner Overton oversees uh, the health director, so he would work with her then and come back with that solution. That would be my suggestion. Okay, Commissioner Duckham. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. 
I don't know why, I mean, who started the rumor the car seats will be eliminated? Because it's really up to the health department where they spend their money. They have so much to work with and they can place their priorities. I don't think we should be assisting the health department director into managing, managing his department. Thank you. Commissioner Alwa. I agree with Commissioner Duckham. Uh, I think to be clear, the administrator has laid it out that the commissioners don't direct the health department what to cut. He doesn't direct them what to cut. Told them what needed to be cut and let them make the decisions. And uh, the health director there and her staff apparently uh, believe that this was the one of the least worthwhile programs for them, or least impactful, I think, uh, for the health department. And I, I guess I don't see where we're going to cut something else from the county. I mean, is it another department we're going to cut? Health department we're going to cut, or what? And I don't necessarily support this move. Uh, we rely on the wisdom uh, of the directors of our departments to make these decisions, and that's what we had done on this. So, thank you. Any other commissioner comments? Yeah, I got it. Corey, commissioner. Excuse me. Um, I just want a little. I'm so, I, I was listening, but we've gone off into this discussion. If I could get clarity on the actual motion Mr. Commissioner Mahoney made. There's no specific dollar amount, correct? No. Do no, he's just asking the Administrator Controller's Office through the Health Department to come up with additional funding for the car seat program. And with no specific time frame either, correct? Just until... Until such time as an a program could be found outside the Health Department. Okay. Thank Am you. I correct, Commissioner Mahoney? You are correct. Um, unless someone has a, a different motion that they could offer that would allow this program to continue. I guess my concern is that uh, while, while we think we may be close uh, to an agreement, there's not an agreement being made yet that will take this program over. So um, after this vote, it's final. Uh, it's cut from the budget and it won't be funded any longer. So uh, the, while the very newly appointed um, health director may have sought fit for this program to be cut. Um, I mean, I think that we've heard several times over the last two months how impactful this program is to the community. Um, so I, I, that, that's my biggest concern, uh, is that this is a program that was once a uh, privately funded program that the county thought that they could do a better job at funding and managing, and now we're saying that we can no longer fund and manage this program. I think that we have a responsibility to this community, to the, to the individuals who utilize this program, to figure something out in the meantime. So my main concern is this. I, I don't like doing Mr. Kennedy. I'm sorry. I don't like doing anything open-ended without specific amount of time that we're going to obligate ourselves and a specific amount of money. Um, so, Commissioner Mahoney, if you want to win my support, I would like to hear a time frame and a dollar amount. And I'd suggest to go small and we could work fast as we can to try to get a bridge to somewhere else to do this. Commissioner Elwell. <clears throat> Mike, if I can ask, the Jackson, the GTSP Jackson Traffic Safety Program paid for part of this at one time, did it not? And has that program been co completely eliminated or are there some funds still left there or are there grants that are still given out for things besides car seats? What happened to the funding that was there? That that was derived from the five dollar fee on tickets, correct? Right. Is that five dollars uh, still assessed on the tickets or not? It is. Hmm. And it 
equals out to fifty thousand dollars every year. It varies by the number of tickets. Oh. The well, therein lies my question. And what happens to the amount above the fifty thousand that's there? Mr. Bear, correct me if my understanding is wrong, but at this moment I understand that this cut was not made by the Board of Commissioners. This cut was not made by the Administrator Controller. The Health Department was told your budget needs to come down by a certain number of dollars, and the Director of the Health Department made this cut. Is that correct? Correct. Madam Clerk, could you post the vote? Yes, Sorry. Sir, you've spoken twice. Uh, Sir, you've spoken twice. So. Somebody else can make an amendment, sure. Mr. Dr. Tompkins. Could you repeat the motion so we all understand because it's welcome back and forth. Commissioner Mahoney, your motion, please. Excuse me. For the administrator controller to find funding to continue the program until an ad adequate program can be found. Is that correct? Okay. Are there any amendments? Yeah, I'd like to make Go ahead. Excuse me, to the satisfaction of Commissioner uh, Kennedy, from, from what it looks like, the program uh, would be approximately $50,000. So I'd like to make an amendment um, that the dollar amount be put on there $50,000 uh, and not to exceed one year of extension of the program funded by the county. Motion and support to the amendment. At this time, we're voting on the amendment. The, the, the amendment is a specific dollar amount. Commissioner Baer? No. Commissioner Walls? No. Commissioner Kennedy? No. Commissioner Duckham? No. Commissioner Tompkins? Yes. Commissioner Mahoney? Yes. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Commissioner Elwell? No. Chairman Shetwell? No. Six no's, three yeas. Six no's, three yeas on the amendment. Now we'll be voting on the primary motion. So, please. Okay. Commissioner Walls? No. Commissioner Kennedy? Yes. Commissioner Duckham? No. Commissioner Tompkins? Yes. Commissioner Mahoney? Yes. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Commissioner Elwell? No. Commissioner Baer? No. Chairman Shotwell? No. Five no's, four yeas. Defeated 5-4. Looking for a motion to approve resolution, revol, resolution 0919.39, General Appropriations Act, and 0919.40, which establishes the general, non-general, capital fund budgets, and 0919.41, which establishes the compensation for non-union employees, and 0919.42, the annual statement of compliance with Public Act 152. So moved. So moved. I have a motion by Commissioner Elwell, supported by Commissioner Baird. That's for those items there only. Yes. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Baird and Duckham. You can pick. Certainly. Okay. Mine's not coming up electronically. Yes. 
sorry. Here's one. Phil. Bill? He's up. He's up. Yes, sir. Do you need any more motions now? Okay. Pass seven two. We've arrived now at public comment. Guidelines each individual will state their name and have two minutes to address the board. You may only address the board once under this public comment opportunity and may not yield your time to others. Board members will not debate nor answer questions at this time. Any public comment? Peter Bournemouth, 142 West Pearl Street. As you know, you set up a new 911 center and you removed that from the authority of the sheriff. Uh, you put it in a new building, you bought new equipment. Um, I recall that Commissioner Elwell at the time that that um, was being put forward insisted that the county pay for the equipment that was needed, um, the radios, et cetera, for the township fire and police services. Um, when I went in and asked Mike, because we've been told that this program is over budget, he told me that the county now has to pay somewhere between 420, 430,000 a year for, for this program. Um, and at the time we were assured that there was a fee on all cell phones and I believe landlines as well that was going to pay for this equipment and for this transition. So I'd like to say there, there's a budget expense that wasn't there before where we could help out with car seats if that wasn't there. So I'd like to see that when, when people say that something's going to be covered by a tax or something's going to be covered by a bond, that it actually is. I mean, because this money's coming out of the general fund. And, and I don't think that that's what people voted for. That's what people understood was going to happen. Thank you. Any other commissioner comments or public comment? Any other public comment? Commissioner comments? Commissioner Mahoney. I uh, just want to say that um, I'm, I'm very disappointed that we're losing this car seat program. I hope that the efforts that um, are being put forth to find an alternate uh, source to fund and, and take this program in uh, for the, the long haul, I hope that this uh, comes to fruition before there's actually a need from an a individual in our community uh, that may need to utilize this and won't have the ability to. Um, and, you know, I just want to say that um, when I was when I was asked to run for county commission, um, I made a promise to myself uh, that I would always make sure I make decisions um, that I'm comfortable with, that I can sleep with that night. Uh, I don't do this uh, for show. I don't do this for damn sure for the money. Um, uh, in fact, it's probably costing me money. Um, and I don't do this uh, for any accolades.
accolades. Uh, so, you know, I, I just hope that the decision that we made tonight is the right one. Uh, true enough, we don't dictate what happens in our uh, department director's budgets, uh, but we all know there's a, definitely a heavy amount of influence not only by us, but by our administrator on those department heads on what to cut and where to cut, especially when those individuals are new to our county. Commissioner comments? Yes. Yeah, just very briefly, just wanted just to mention as we're continuing to uh, find some type of replacement for the CARSI program, if there's anything that I can do to help facilitate that, please uh, let me know. And also wanted just to acknowledge uh, the Treasurer's Office and their work with the Missioner Plating helping us get that cleaned up. Nothing further. Thank you. Any other Commissioner comments? In accordance with MCL 15.268, legal case number 1519-CV-10797-JEL SL 1519 that will be discussed. I entertain a motion, please. Second. I have a motion and second. Any questions? Clerk, could you call the roll? Oh, I see you have it posted. Unanimous. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll adjourn upstairs. Yes. Motion in support. Any further comments? Any other business? Seeing or hearing none, obtain a motion to adjourn. Yep, support. Did not get a vote? I apologize. We have to go back and take a vote on coming back into session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Duly carried. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Complete.